I've been trying to gather my thoughts about Halo Infinite ever since the gameplay reveal, and I just don't think I can put it together in a well-executed video, and I know that some are going to click off of this and get bored, and honestly, I only expect you to watch this if you are a hardcore Halo fan. And if you are a hardcore Halo fan and manage to finish this entire thing and listen to my points, I hope you will share it with people that didn't watch the whole thing. Because again, I really think only the hardcore are going to listen to what I have to say, and then the general audience won't. And I hope that we can spread a message here that I basically want to share. And it's not going to be just instantly what you think. Because there's something big that we kind of got to talk about, and it's not just the one thing that you, you think you know. <laughs> this video is basically about, and it's very raw, I'm just going to be laying some visuals over and I have some notes, but I just want to present my case to you, no jump cuts or whatever, very few of them at least, about myself, you, the Halo community, and general gamers. What do we want? We want great games. That's what we want. We want great games. We're in this year of the next-gen consoles and Halo Infinite, one of the most iconic franchises of all time, is getting its first new game in five years since the last mainline entry. And we've been following breadcrumbs for this game, at least the fans, for two years with no gameplay in sight. And it's been such a different kind of marketing for a Halo game that and I have an entire video about why Halo Infinite is so important. And people have just been paying attention. And after the long wait, there was finally the gameplay reveal in the Xbox Game Showcase earlier on this week, depending on when I upload this. And it's left the community as a whole kind of just... There's different sides of this. But I would say overall, surprisingly... If you look at like the Halo community, it's like 70-30 right now. The Halo community is like 70-30. People are really impressed with some of the things that I'm going to talk about that I was impressed too. And to put me in a category, I am both. Because the other community is the general gaming side of things. The general gamer side of things that's like, uh, I'm going to get a PS5 because of this. I'm going to get an Xbox because of this. I like to be on both and I just want good games. The general gaming community, they, it's almost reversed. It's almost like the Halo community, 70-30, and the general gaming community is like 30-70. Why is that? Why is there so much of this split down the middle? I want to talk about that and why I literally am sitting right in the middle of it. And I'm really curious where you think you sit as well. And I'm I'm a huge Halo fan. OK, I need to give you background about like who I am and who you're about to listen to for. I don't know how long because I am a huge Halo fan. I am also a massive gaming fan. Gaming is my biggest pastime. I freaking adore it. That's why I'm trying to make the channel focused about it because I just I love it so much and I love to build up hype for things and I want to build up the hype for Infinite as I still am going to. And seriously, where is... I did grab this. So this is one of my most prized possessions. That is a Halo Reach poster signed by like a dozen 343 employees, 30 Bungie employees, and almost all of the cast of Red vs. Blue. This is my most prized possession. You can't really see it very well because it's shining, but there is a ton of of autographs on this thing. I freaking love Halo. I love it. I got a Master Chief Piggy Bank legendary edition of Reach. Done deal. I also care a lot about gamers. So let's get into why this community was so split. First off, I want to talk about what I personally really liked about this demo and I think the Halo community specifically is super happy about just I don't I don't even want to list everybody I've been just getting so many different people's opinions and I, I line up with a lot of them and a lot of people are saying some good stuff about this demo being that the story is good okay I, uh, there's some that might not think so but I personally believe okay I'll just share my opinions here story's good we only got a little glimpse of it, and we still know very little of it, but this new chieftain, I admit I forgot his name, I can never announce it either whenever I read it, 
he and the banished had put UNSC on the run. There was a very scary shot of UNSC completely just decimated apparently and they've lost this war and chief is great because i love the teaser trailer for this first off okay they started off this thing when if you watch the show live there was a cinematic that showed the mjolnir armor getting made instead of the stupid nanotech technology that changed his suit and that was awesome i love that cinematic and i love the way it's just showing the suit getting built. You don't see Chief actually wear it. You just hear Cortana say, you have to wear this no matter how great we construct it. That's great. Because that means you, the player, have to wear this. And that's one of the great things about Chief. That's why Chief and Doom Guy get compared so much. It's because you are embodying this super soldier. And so... Chief is great here because he still has a character. And if you look at these interviews, the director is saying he was asked if Chief is more of kind of a bit more verbal type that he was in the 343 games, or is he more of the strong silent type that he was in the Bungie games? And they're saying that we're trying to live in the middle, but if I had to lean towards something, we're going towards more the strong silent type. And you see that in this trailer. And I personally love that because I want Chief to have a character and I'm sure he's going to have a character. But he in this trailer is all about the mission. He's doing the mission and he does seem like that strong silent type that we previously knew him as. Brohammer is Bay. <laughs> the chemistry between Brohammer and Chief, I don't know if you call it chemistry, but the dialogue is so great, at least to me. It is the kind of dialogue I miss between Chief and other characters, having just very human people alongside him. Chief being human is important, but it's important to have very human characters alongside him. I just love the dialogue between them. That's it. Brohammer and Chief have great dialogue together because Chief is that rigid, silent type like he is. But Brohammer's a freaking human guy that just wants to go home. He's done with this. He and the UNSC are broken. He doesn't want any part of this. He thought he was going to leave when he found Chief, but instead he's getting way more in the danger. <laughs> so, and I, there's actually a bit of comedic element to that. There was ac I actually kind of chuckled when I was watching the trailer. And it's been so long since I've had that in Halo. Instead of, you know, them trying to do some zippy one-liner like putting Buck in or whatever, I was actually laughing here because this is just a really genuine feeling character. So story's really good. Music is, I don't want to say perfect, but it is so much better. The previous Halo games in 4 and 5, I like their soundtracks. But kind of the criticism with 4 and 5 is that they started to not feel like Halo anymore. And what that feeling that captured Halo. It's not necessarily that people are super nostalgic. It's that there are certain things that atta made people attached to Halo. And one of those things is the kind of wondrous feeling of the soundtracks that Marty O'Donnell did, our Lord and Savior. I got his autograph too on Halo 3. And the soundtrack is part of that. So previously they got Curtis Dreiser who worked on, I admit, I forget, a, star, a Starbound game or something. And I love his music. I've been listening to it. And in this gameplay demo, we got to listen to Gareth, I'm going to mess up this name, Coker. And he worked on the Ori games, which have phenomenal soundtracks, and the Ark Survival stuff, which I've been listening to today as before I recorded this. And I thought the music was great in this. They are doing a great job of adding a more wondrous soundtrack instead of a action blockbuster style, which isn't Halo. Halo isn't some action blockbuster. There is action, but one of the metal things about Halo is that it's just a sense of wonder. I keep using that word, but this music is great. Gameplay. The gameplay is freaking punchy and it is Awesome. That is the thing I've been seeing the Halo community really resonate with is the gameplay at its core. Gameplay is not just visuals. It's not just soundtrack. It's not just art direction. Gameplay is literally how the game plays. What's the mechanics? How do things move? How, what's what kind of things do you use to actually progress? And the gameplay really feels like Halo. There is sprint, which some people are complaining about. I personally am not a big objector of sprint. But what I think is interesting is that Sprint is actually slower 
than usual. At least it looks like to me. It looks like Chief has a lot more weight to him in this game, which is cool. And his sprint doesn't make him go like as boosted and fast as 4 and 5 did. And punchy. The game has so much punchy. The sound effects are freaking just sharp and hit hard. And the Warthog sounds great. The explosions sound great. There is blood, which makes me super happy because I wanted Infinite to be M-rated and it still could be T-rated. But I just think blood is a part of that factor that made Halo also have that feel. Being instead of just some sci-fi shooter with lasers, there actually is kind of a metal factor to it. And when I saw that grunt blow up and just turn into a mist of blood, I hope that was blood at least. It could have been the plasma grenade. It probably was the plasma grenade. But no, I saw some blood come out of some people that he was shooting at. So I love that there's blood there. The sounds are great. The uh, it, Everything just feels good. And explosions look nice. And there is... A lot of weapons there was a lot of weapons showcased like just moving on the fly switching weapons and shit and it was just solid it looked like really it felt a lot more like halo it didn't feel like a modern shooter i even had a friend that said i was a little bit disappointed because it didn't feel like a modern shooter and i was just like i'm actually happy he said that because that's good <laughs> it shouldn't feel like a modern shooter it should feel like just what halo isn't about being a modern shooter it's supposed to make you feel like this is a different kind of shooter. So great, at least in my opinion. And the open world was the biggest reveal, in my opinion, of this demo. Seeing the, the open world being an actual thing, the second that HUD opened up with the map, everybody's reactions exploded. I watched a lot of people's reactions too, and it was the same for me. Like it just, it's crazy to think that we are actually gonna have an open world Halo game, which is confirmed in interviews with the game director. I, I'm worried that the campaign will not be a campaign because that is very traditional Halo. But after this interview, it kind of made me feel like there's going to be a path that you can follow that basically makes it feel like it's a very interactive campaign. Instead of going mission to mission to mission to mission, fading to black and loading the levels up, especially if you play it on Series X because of SSD drive, it's going to just kind of seem like a continuous journey you, the player, are going on on this ring and really trying to immerse you in that experience by making it a potential open world like adventure. But in reality, you could keep it linear. I'm playing Final Fantasy 15 right now, and I hate how far the main quests are from each other. But nonetheless, if you want to focus on the story, just go from here to there, follow these red dots. But don't go to any of the yellow ones. I think Halo Infinite might have a similar thing where it's just like, go to these objectives, ignore these side ones. That could be cool. That could make it just feel like the most immersive Halo campaign, basically. There's a lot of interviews. There's a lot of interviews and lots of media outlets that got to talk with people before the game showcase happened and just tons of things like upgradable equipment. By the way, I forgot to mention the grappling hook's freaking cool. I love the grappling hook. I was a bit worried about that, but I just love that Chief can grab the fusion coil and throw it at people, and, and you can zoom in on people kind of like Doomguy can, but it's it's a bit more... You don't seem as light as Doomguy, which I like, because Chief is a literal tank. So it's... I just love the grappling hook and the return of equipment, it looks like, is a thing, which it doesn't even look like. I think that's confirmed in an interview, too. <sighs> just upgradable equipment, I think. That's what they said in the interview. You can track and choose your paths, the open world. And an interesting statement that was in the interviews that I will link to a lot of the sources that I, as we transition into this next part of this video, I need you to know... I'm not just stating what I think I know. There's a lot of people that left a lot of, in my opinion, harsh comments on my Halo Infinite reaction, which is just part of the game. When you're making content, you have to expect the more eyes on you, the more haters you're going to get. But I want to clarify that I'm not just stating things here. I'm, I did my research. If you want to look at a lot of sources, go to the description of this video, and I left you a lot of links there. But that being said, another thing in these interviews is that Chris Tucker Lee, I, I admit, I, I researched his name, I just can't remember it, but I know it's Chris, but Chris, the director of the game, is saying that he wants Halo Infinite to be kind of the launch of a platform. It's not that they want to make a Halo Infinite 2 or a Halo 7, they want Halo Infinite to be the launch of kind of this big platform that they want to develop for 
potentially next 10 years. They used that and I was like, whoa. But in order for that to happen, and I don't mind that as an idea, this game has to impress people. And as a Halo fan, all the notes earlier I said, I'm happy with the gameplay, with the music, with the story, even though we only got a little tiny bit of it. From what I've seen, looks good. From what I've seen previously, seems good. What is sending that 30% of the Halo community and 70% of the gaming community in a fritz that is literally creating this divide primarily is the graphics and visuals. That's really the thing that is not the main problem. We'll get to what the main problem is, but the graphics and visuals kind of supplement what the main problem is. The most universal critique of this gameplay look is that it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. Its graphics are not impressive at all. And I admit I'm on that side of people. It's very disappointing. And I've been, again, just looking at a ton of people's opinions about this and people giving sound arguments and some think it looks great. You know, it's very split. But the visuals are not superior to even a lot of things that were at the show. There's a lot of things at the show that, yes, they didn't show a ton of gameplay there, but there was something, I think it's called Exo Mecha or something before the show. That actually looked way more impressive visually. Crossfire, that looked more impressive visually too. There's a lot of games that visually looked more impressive, strictly speaking, in terms of the visuals and graphics. I could talk about the art direction. A lot of people are saying the art direction for this is looking really blocky and looking really kind of flat and stuff. And I somewhat agree, but to me, that's not as much of an issue as the graphics. And graphics don't make a game. What matters most at its core is gameplay. That is always what matters first and foremost. That being said, the graphics for this were not pretty. And a lot of people are going to say, you know, this was an early build. This was an early build that is getting thrown around a lot at people. And... Yeah, the game isn't finished. We can't say with 100% certainty that's what the game's going to look like in the end. And I can guarantee you that's not what I'm saying. I don't think the game's going to look like that in the end. It sure as hell better not. And nobody else is saying that either. People are allowed to have concern, though. They are allowed to have concern. And there's a lot of people that are even posting these comparisons. Like, I'm looking at some right now where they put Reach, Halo Reach, a 2010 game side by side with Halo Infinite, the launch of this next gen system that is gonna be able to have scalable visuals. Game design can't be scaled, but visuals can. Visuals can be scaled. That is textures, that is ray tracing, that is lighting, that is visuals. That can be scaled up and down. And so a lot of people were like, even though these games are going to be on Xbox One and lower model PCs, game could still look good. It might not have bigger game design concepts, but it could still look good. But then our first look at the gameplay for this, you put it side by side with Halo Reach 2010 and then Halo Infinite 2020. Halo Reach looks better. And that's just weird. That's just really weird. And people are also, I'm just, I'm just clicking around right now, where they're noticing the facial expressions of the brute. There's a brute that gets smacked in the face and he screams when he gets hit, but his face is just stiff. It doesn't move. There's been a lot of memes about it too. And there's just n not too much of a attempt to put textures on things either. There's an official screenshot, 343 3 released, of the Banished kind of in a line together and... Again, there's a talk about the art direction, but specifically the textures on these guys, there just isn't much going on, even in the environment. The environment in the background, as you zoom out, there is the fades. There's the fades, and here's a couple things confirmed. This is an early build. This is an early build. This is not the final product. Of course it's not. I don't need to be even told that. That's just obvious. It's not the final build. Of course it's not. And two... This was running on 
a PC that is supposed to be as powerful as a Series X. So there was me and a couple other folks that were hoping that this was running on an Xbox One, and that's why it looked like it did, and it's like, this is how it's going to look on Xbox One, to which, if that's the case, fine, great. As uh, This is totally playable. It's playable, but you're not really showcasing what the game is, unfortunately. That's a bad marketing move, but at least it looks playable on Xbox One. Cool. But no, apparently this was running on something as powerful as a Series X, and even Aaron Greenberg, the person then that's in charge of the marketing for Xbox, is like, play, and, and seriously, I'm not quoting him, but he's basically saying, did you guys look at that right? Like, play it at 4K 60 frames per second. It looks good. It's not the final product. We're still working on it, but it looks good. And if you think the game looks great, that's awesome. I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm not saying other people are right. And if you think the game looks awesome, then that's awesome, man. Don't even worry about it. But there is one key point about this whole visual aspect, though. And for those that are worried about the visuals, or I should say not worried about the visuals because they're saying it's an early build, they'll, they'll polish it up, don't worry about it. There are so many previous examples of games that have shown gameplay two years out. And the gameplay they showcased looked better than the final product. I'm going to say that again. There's games that have been shown two years out. And it looked better than the final product. This was a game that was shown four months before it was released. And people are questioning the visuals. I'm not saying it's like a universal everybody hates it. But there's enough people that is making it a concern. And it's four months out. Whereas there are games like Ghost of Tsushima showed its gameplay in 2018. It looks stupendous. It just came out recently. And now there's these comparisons to its 2018 reveal to it now, two years later, retail. Same goes for Red Dead Redemption, which is the best looking game I've ever seen in my life. And the comparisons for that one are actually pretty good. If you look at the 2017 trailers to the final product, Actually, that one managed to improve a slight bit. I could even talk about my biggest hype train of my entire life in gaming being Kingdom Hearts 3. My two favorite game franchises of all time, Kingdom Hearts and Halo. I was so stoked for Kingdom Hearts 3 for half of my life, basically. And the first time they showed gameplay for that was 2015. And that was not the like early before they switched uh, engines. Again, don't say I didn't do my research. That is after, after they switched to the Unreal 4 engine, they showed gameplay in 2015, and compared to how it looked in the final product, it was not that drastic of an improvement. So when people say, don't worry, it's an early build, this is four months out. And we have seen games like Last of Us. We have seen games like fellow Doom Eternal, the fellow game that gets compared a lot to Halo. It just released its game this year in March 2020, and we saw its gameplay for the first time in 2018. And it looks not terribly different. And that was two years. That's why I'm saying the argument that, like, don't worry, it's an early build, it's true. It's not wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong. But what I'm saying is that unless this early build was at least, like, early 2019, then, yeah, there's there's cause for people to be alarmed. I'm not saying they should be alarmed. I'm not saying they shouldn't. But they have justification for being alarmed if they want the game to look better. Again, if you think the game looks great... That's awesome. Stick with that. I am super happy for you. And for the folks that are kind of like me, you know, that are that just was kind of not blown away by the visuals and really wanted to be, we're probably going to have to live with what we have, if not just a bit better. My main thing I want to present in all this is the main problem is not the visuals, though. It's really not. You think that that is it. You think that that's the biggie, like, like, oh, he just did this entire rant to talk about the visuals. That's not, that's not the big problem. The big problem is that people 
want Halo to be big again. It took me all day to realize this. I didn't know how to do a video about Halo Infinite because something I needed to get something straight before I did this video. I really needed to get something straight, like in internally, because there was something sitting with me after like watching it myself and looking at other people's reactions. And I'm just like, what's festering in me and probably a lot of other people that they might not even realize it. People want Halo to be big again. There's so many people that are saying, I want Halo to feel like Halo again, but I just know there's so many, especially fans of the series and former fans, because everybody and their mother owned Halo 3 at one point. They want Halo to be big again. They want to get into Halo again, and they want others to be able to, too. Because it's nice when you have other people on your hype trains, on your game. Why do, why do we try to get people to watch a certain show? It's because we want to talk with them about it. Why do we recommend them this book? Because we want to go to a book, a book club and talk with them about it. Why do we want people to play this multiplayer game with us? It's because we want to play with them and talk with them about it. People want to get back to Halo. They do. It is a classic franchise. And so the real problem here is that Halo didn't appeal to the masses. And because there is any shred of doubt in somebody's mind that wants Halo to be big again, which I feel like should be everybody, if there's a shred of doubt that is in anybody's mind like that, then that causes chaos. And because the visuals, it's some might have liked the visuals, some might have disliked, but regardless, because it's in question, because it's in question, People are severely concerned because they want Halo to appeal to everybody. But what will instantly catch people's appeal? What will catch the general audience's appeal? You have, there is a rule about marketing where you have to hook somebody in. You have to have a hook within the first five, five seconds of your video. You have to have a good first chapter in your book. You have to make your movie or show interesting in the first episode or 20 minutes. You know, that's really important. And in terms of video games, it's different for everybody. But the thing that initially catches you just right away, I'm not saying it's what's going to determine if you like the trailer or demonstration or not. But the thing that's going to get your interest right away is how good does this look? That is not the determining factor. But in terms of a hook, how good does this look? And then if it looks good then you will be interested to see, okay, what's the story? What's the gameplay? What's all the other stuff? How's the music? And I think they tried to do that here because they started with that teaser. They started with that gorgeous teaser, gorgeous teaser, cinematic teaser. I think it's actually the first technical cinematic one we've got for Halo other than the Series X's reveal of Chief's armor getting forged. They did that to probably just build up hype and to have a good visual start to the show. But what if it was also because Xbox didn't have full confidence in this demonstration? It could have just started off with the whole 167 days or whatever after we lost, but they started with that visual teaser. You got to hook your audience. And if you doubt the visuals, then start with good visuals, which they did. But then the gameplay happened and people started to doubt and what I said earlier is important about the good. The music is so good. The gameplay is solid. The story is really promising. 343 is really listening to fan feedback. They are. And they deserve to make this game. They deserve to make their game here. And yes, there's probably some artistic style things like... I personally am not a fan of the very just rock solid color choice of just your red, your blue, your purple, instead of having kind of a variety of colors on the person, like one primary, but a, a few secondaries or whatever. And like the kind of blockiness of some things that that's just art direction style. And, and I could disagree with that. But the visuals that is that has to be smooth. And people have noticed that there are mountains popping in and out when you unpause the map all the textures are loading in they did a zoom in on the chief's face as if it was a great showcase to show and yet it 
pales in comparison to something like Hellblade 2. Halo doesn't have to look amazing to be a great game. Halo has to look great to become big again. And because of that, that's the problem. It's not that the visuals are bad. It's that people want Halo to be big again. Subconsciously or consciously. That is kind of the goal. And they did not showcase that very well here. They showcased a very, very small kind of taste of it. But when this game is four months out and you haven't had any marketing for it, really. You got to choose your presentation. Why would 343 sanction off this part? Or why would Xbox Greenlight showing this showcase to showcase their system that boasts their power? That they have. They really do. And yet it doesn't. Why would they choose this sanction off early build? Why would they choose the level as well? It wasn't really a level that demonstrated, you know, it wasn't anything bombastic like... Uh, three, they had this epic campaign trailer of all these vehicles and so on. And I don't remember what they did for four. Oh, four, they went through the forest and showed you fighting Prometheans. And five, it was a pretty bombastic experience of like, you know, attacking the Covenant City. And, you know, they do those things because that's what marketing is. Marketing builds up games because that's how you get your communities. That's how you sell it. That's how you get people to talk about it. And people are talking about Halo now, but in a negative light. Or in a very conflicted light, I should say. And that's the problem. People want Halo to be big again. And if it is not, like, blowing people away, then it makes for a subconscious, like, nerd spot to happen. Like, a little, like, flick of the switch that we're not aware of. That's just like, oh no, people are going to panic now. And people are trying to correct people's panic, but in reality, an early build, an early build... Or let's just even say some have said, I don't know where this date came from. I've looked into it. I haven't seen January anywhere, but somebody said the early builds from January. Great. Let's look at Kingdom Hearts. Let's look at Doom Eternal. Let's look at Ghost of Tsushima. Let's look at Red, uh, Last of Us 2. Let's look at Red Dead Redemption 2. There is a long list of games, I can tell you, that were two years out. It's not a legitimate point. So, this still seems... Like, a seriously solid Halo game that 343 is doing. And they deserve to make it right. And so, I explained the, what the title of this video is, what the problem is. My personal solution, as much as it pains me to say it, 343 deserved to make this game. I think they earned that chance here with the music, with the story, with the gameplay, with the characters... I think they've earned the shot here. As much as people might disagree about like wanting to rely on the past, it's about the here and now. And we have a potentially return to Roots Halo that everybody is saying it feels a lot more like Halo 1, and that's awesome. So give them the chance. I don't think Halo Infinite should be a launch title for Series X. As much as I want it to be, and as much as that is a, an important business strategy to make that happen... It deserves to launch as a complete game. They are saying that ray tracing will not be at launch. We will add that in an update after the launch. There are some that are rumoring that the game will not launch with multiplayer. That is only a rumor. There was another one that that basically the campaign will be not entirely complete. It will be kind of spread out. Excuse my French, but fuck that. <laughs> Let this game launch entirely the way 343 wants to. Let it be polished the way 343 wants to. It's earned the chance. The Halo community seems to be really happy with it. I'm pretty happy with it. It just deserves to get polished so it can appeal to that general mass and potentially Halo become big again. Truly. I need to think of a hashtag for this. Hashtag give infinite a chance. Let's do that. Give infinite a chance or give infinite chance. I don't know. I'll put it in the description. I'll, if it's under the title of this, that's what the hashtag is. We need to start that movement. So my call to action is just spread this message. 
spread that hashtag, spread that movement. I would love your comments, but honestly, I don't need you to watch another video. I don't, I would like to know your thoughts. Just please give Infinite a chance. Let it get polished. So Halo gets to have the main game it wants to have that 343 has spent so long to try to make.